Okay. Welcome everyone. And thank you for listening to Back Talk by Successful Black Parenting Magazine, the podcast talk show for parents. I'm Janice Robinson Celeste, your host and publisher of Successful Parenting Media. Now, I want you to tell all of your friends and followers about the show. So go to the Facebook page for Successful Black Parenting and share the link with your followers right now and let people know that you are joining us. Even better, you can click the options and start a watch party. You can also comment on Facebook and I will post the best comments live on air. And know that it can take a while for your questions to populate in the backstage area. So ask any questions early, don't wait. Know that our hashtag for the show is hashtag back talk. Now, co-parenting, it's always been a thing, but it's really taken center stage with celebrity parents like Will Smith, you have Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon, Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony, um, Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet. Uh, so today on Back Talk, I have Natasha Hastings, who is an Olympic world and U.S. national track and field sprinter. She co-parents with her NFL husband and is here to help uh, separated and divorced parents learn how to do it. Welcome, Natasha. Hi. Thank you. I just want to make a correction. We're not together. Oh, please. Anymore. <laughs> oh yeah yeah okay yeah that's what we're talking about being separated and divorced so that's fine but can you tell everyone ab about your your nfl husband who he is and how it came to be that you guys agreed to co-parent your children um so we have one little boy he's 13 months old okay. um we he and i dated on and off for about 10 years mm -hmm. and uh we were engaged to get married and the wedding was called off uh mm -hmm. like around Christmas time. Um, and so it's just been a process since then. I mean, it's still a work in progress, still something that we're working on. It's not perfect, nowhere near perfect, <laughs> um, but we both you know, love our son unconditionally. And um, I think the biggest challenge is, you know, and I think this is something that people face in relationships, not in relationships, um, Sometimes we have different parenting styles or ideas. Um, so it's kind of been a, a challenge trying to, you know, somehow meet in the middle for our son. Okay. And you guys are working through it. Uh, yeah. But you are a busy working mom. So mm -hmm. can you give us an idea of your daily schedule with your son? <sighs> daily schedule. Schedule is, is, is loose. <laughs> <laughs> um, because he's up at like, between six and seven is when he wakes up. Um, and I'm not a morning person. So it's kind of a struggle where it's like, I'm like, oh, give me another five minutes. But when, once he's up, he's like, no, someone come get me. Um, and so actually, thankfully, my mom is here helping me with him. And then my brother is um, quarantining with us as well. So sometimes they'll go in and get him and keep him for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I get him in the morning, we do breakfast, he's still nursing. So we do, we breastfeed first thing in the morning. Um, I like to get my workout in. I'm a grad student, so I work on school. Um, and then the rest of the day is kind of spent running behind him and trying to do like business stuff in between. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much my day. <laughs> and then he's down for bed, I try to have him down before eight. So between seven and eight, um, is bedtime. Well, that is a lot to do. So mm -hmm. I could, I just commend you on all, all the things you have to do plus work and you have to train in between all of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in like a, an, what we call our off season right now where um, I'm not officially training, but I, you know, we just can't like totally put it down. So I had taken about like two weeks off where I did like absolutely nothing, but now I go for runs in the mornings. Um, if I do wake up early enough and I can get to this school before um, the kids are in school, I'll go to the track and do like an interval workout. And then I have like a little gym in my garage. So I go in my gym and do, or go in my garage gym <laughs> and do a little workout in there. Um, so yeah, I try to work out at least four to five days a week. Well, gym garages are the place to be here with COVID, right? So <laughs> that is the yeah. place to be today. So I hope my coach can look at me back into the gym. It's just so much more efficient. Yes, absolutely. Let me ask you, in your opinion, what's the difference between co-parenting and basic custody agreements? 
Um, I mean, I think co-parenting and, and I feel like it's kind of the way you would hope that you can go in terms of like being able to do it yourself and being able to come to an agreement in terms of what, I mean, for lack of a better word, what co-parenting is going to look like in terms of what are my responsibilities? What are your responsibilities? Time spent, time split, um, bills, all of that stuff versus a court, um, you know, having someone else come in and tell you all what you're going to do. Um, ideally, I would hope that, you know, we could do it amongst ourselves and as adults rather than having to have someone come in and tell us how we have to do things. Right. You guys have to make mutual decisions about everything from if they're going to play sports, that type of thing. Correct. Right. Exactly. Work that out. Yeah. OK. So let me ask you, um, how do you manage those major decisions in, in your children's lives and the disagreements that may come along? How do you manage that? Well, honestly, Liam is so young <laughs> that yeah. we haven't had any of those big decisions okay, yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, I anticipate that it won't necessarily be, um, you know, smooth sailing. I'm pretty certain there will be disagreements along the way. But my thing is always, and, you know, something that I've said from the beginning is I want my child to find his own way, you know, mm -hmm. and I want him to find his own identity. So he's got two superstar athlete parents. <laughs> um, and so there's, there's naturally that this competitiveness that I think we both want to see him go into sports, but I really, really want for him to find his own way. And so I've, I've kind of been like, you know, if he doesn't find track or football, I'm like, great, you know, go play baseball, go play golf, go do something. Um, whereas, I mean, I can't really speak for his dad, but I'm sure his dad would love for him to follow in his footsteps. Whereas I'm kind of the one that's like, uh, the concussion, CTE, all of that stuff, like go do your own thing. So I mean, we'll see. I'm I'm prayerful that, you know, we kind of allow him to try out just about everything and then he, you know, decide for himself what he wants to do. OK, fantastic. Now, my audience would be amiss if I did not ask you if it was OK to say who the dad is and without we're not right night name dropping, but they're going to be wondering because you're talking about him. Is it possible you could t tell us who? I'd rather not. Oh, OK. <laughs> no, it's fine. Whatever you're comfortable yeah, with, it's fine. I didn't want to say it without it. asking. Yeah, okay. they, no they, problem. If you search me, you'll find it. But I, oh, yeah. yeah, no worries. No <laughs> worries. It's okay. I don't want to make you uncomfortable with that. So, you know, we respect that. Let me ask you about this because communication is key in co parenting, right? Mm -hmm. So, you always have to provide the information that you expect the other parent um, to give you. You know, you have to kind of say, okay, you know, treat someone else, your other parent, as I want to be treated. So, what advice would you give to a parent who might be going through this um, for the first time, especially when another parent may, might refuse to communicate? Like, what can they do? My two biggest things that I keep at the forefront is what's, my, what's in the best interest of my child and then respect. Um, you know, at the very least, I feel like a very big part of parenting is not just how you parent, but the example that you set for your children. And if we can't, you know, have the common courtesy to just be respectful of one another, and that's everything from being, having self-respect, respect for my child, respect for my child's father, I think those are the, the two biggest things to remember that like you really need to keep your child's best interests at the forefront and you need to be respectful of one another. And as I'm saying that, <laughs> I'm also thinking of something else because I'm like deep into mental health. I'm in therapy. That's actually what I'm, I'm in grad school for, but also, you know, understanding each other's boundaries and, you know, what each other, what each parent needs. Um, and you know, each parent needs something different in order to show up and be the best parent that they can be. So, you know, I think it all kind of goes back into that respect thing of like communicating, okay, well, this is what I'd like to see happen. This is how I'd like to see it happen. How can we make this happen in a respectful way? Okay. No, that's perfect. And that is very ideal. I hope that everyone gets to experience that because it is uh, much better for um, the child and the, in the long term, especially. Um, do you put everything in writing, whether it's an email or, or do you guys, are you at the point where you can just say it and it works for you? I'm a fan of things being in writing. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, 
I am a fan. And I mean, just, just to be, you know, totally transparent um, or as transparent as I'm comfortable with being, you know, I, our wedding was called off less than a year ago. So, you know, even giving each other the grace to understand that like, this is an emotionally charged thing to go through. And so in, in understanding that, I think it's key to also understand what's the best way for us to communicate in order for the communication to be fruitful and, you know, not, you know, full of ego, or again, we lose sight of what's really important here. So I, I'm a fan of, of, in writing, I'm also a fan of, you know, taking a beat. Um, I have found that there have been times where I'll read something and I'll kind of get a little bit worked up. I'll step away from it for an hour and I'll come back and I'm like, oh, this really isn't that big of a deal, you know? So I think, you know, giving yourself to like, like I said, keep things in writing because it does give you that opportunity to go back and look at it and you can really see like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> let me just, do this or, you know, we can talk about this, but I, I think that, you know, having things in writing does kind of ease a little bit of the headache. Okay. Well, we have one question here and it says, is child support or spousal support something that you work out amongst yourselves or do you not get financial help in co-parenting? So I think the question is, if you co-parent, is, is that just eliminate any financial support? Do you each handle your own part or is financial por uh, support part of that? I think it, it's, I, I guess, like case specific, you know, what works for you, you know, and, and what, again, what does the child need? Who's the child spending the most time with? Um, I think there is um, sort of this misconception that like kids aren't expensive or even um, the parent who doesn't have the child is the one who ends up spending more on the child. And I'm just like, this is just like, <laughs> kerfuffle that like at the end of the day, like my, um, my theory is to do the best that I can for my child. And, you know, I've, I've come from a place where, you know, I want to do more and better for my child. So whatever that is, whatever that looks like in terms of, you know, how we end up splitting it. Um, the biggest, picture for me is making sure that my child has what he needs. So sometimes that comes down to like laying out, like, look, these are the expenses. This is what I want him and him or her, you know, in this program or this sports program, how are you willing to contribute? Or, you know, sometimes it's easier for people to not have to go through that every step of the way. And we just agree, like, this is an amount that we're going to, to, you know, agree upon, but I think it's really case specific and it really depends on mom and dad and what works best for mom and dad. Absolutely. And let me ask you, um, unrelated to that particular question, but, you know, I had to go through custody battles and things with my kids at one point. And I know it's like you said, it's hard to keep your cool, but you mentioned respect and um, but how do you personally keep your cool? You said you step away. Is there anything else that you do that, to help uh, when things don't go as smoothly? Or is it just a matter of mutual respect and courtesy? Uh, well, my therapist is on speed dial. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I know that that's something that um, it's, I, I guess it's in some ways a luxury that not everyone has access to, right? Um, but one thing that I always that my therapist advised me on and that I always go back to is, is try to focus on the things that are real, you know, because we can kind of get caught up on our egos and, you know, how we think a thing is supposed to be or supposed to look or supposed to flow. Um, but I really try to stay centered on what's real and what's real for me is making sure that my son, you know, is in a peaceful environment that he has happy parents, because I think, you know, the happier the both of us are, the happier our boy will be. Um, but really, I mean, <laughs> also, um, I try my best to ignore whatever foolery, like if it's something that can be ignored. And like I said, it's not real, easier said than done. And I've definitely had, um, you know, experiences where I've had to lean into my village, that'd be my mom and some close friends. But, you know, really take the time to like, say, okay, this isn't real. This is an emotionally charged situation right now. Let it cool off. Um, but it does, <laughs> it does take, um, 
energy and lots of practice. And it's, it's a continued thing. I mean, even when you think that you've mastered it, somehow something comes up and you're like, how did we end up here? <laughs> but, you know, you just give yourself grace and, you know, know that it's a process and, you know, just show up the best way you know how. Right. Well, speaking of respect, because there's times I can remember when I was tempted to call my, my ex a name, like even under my breath, but you have to remember the kids at area and your child is still young, but mm-hmm. in heated times, like I remember um, trying to keep that in check. Yeah. And as I got older, I realized that my children are half of him. So whatever I say about him, they will then internalize because they're mm-hmm. part of that. Yeah. And so as parents, we have to be really careful that we don't do that and do things like you said, step away. I think that's very important. Now your child is still young yet, but how do you manage holidays and schedules? Like, does he have to spend certain time with you and then certain time with dad? We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> so, I don't mean with the holidays coming up, um, we're definitely getting ready to, to kind of work things out. And so uh, the thought is that he's gonna, you know, split time I guess Christmas, he'll split time here, split time with his dad, um, a new year similar. And then, so, but we'll see. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a very big, like Christmas, birthdays, holidays. Like, I love those things. So it is um, something that I'm like emotional about, like, oh my God, I want, I want to make sure that, of course, I want to have my son with me, mm-hmm. you know, for those moments, but I do have to share him. So um, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I do know that, you know, he'll he'll have time with both of us. Are you guys in close proximity to one another or will it involve travel um, for the baby? By then it's supposed to be, we're supposed to be in close proximity. Okay. So, okay. Like, so we're still kind of like in transition, figuring things out kind of thing. But by then it should be, yeah. Yeah, I, I had to put my kids on a train because I was afraid of them flying so far. Um, we, I was in Florida and my and dad was in Philadelphia. So it, either way, it, they but they were school age to teens when they were doing that. Um, it's just, um, it's terrifying for, you know, when they're far away. So I'm glad that you're gonna be close to one another. Yeah. Let me ask you, so I'm gonna start to wrap things up a little bit, but from your experiences, what is like one of the most important things that you can you took away from co-parenting that you would like our audience to know um that can help them maybe in the same situation i'm gonna go back to that word respect man (laughs) (laughs) because i just think i think when everybody gets to walk away from a situation feeling like their voice was heard and they were respected and that's everyone down to the child and i mean again my son is 13 months. So, you know, it's a lot of goo goo gaga, but I'm very much in tune with like, what are his needs right now? What do we need to do for him? You know, yes, we'll get to a point where, you know, he can talk and he can tell us what he needs (laughs) and we don't, he's not um, like fully dependent on us. Right. Um, But I think it's really important that, that, that general basic respect be met on all levels for everyone involved from kids to parents because there's nothing worse than walking away and feeling like you weren't heard or you were disrespected and it does nothing but impact the child and so i think that's the biggest thing and and i'll say it again i think um parenting is more than parenting it's setting an example and it's setting an example in every way from how you treat others and the treatment that you accept from others um so respect, man. <laughs> I can't say it enough. That's a big one. I mean, if we don't have respect for one another, it can really spiral out of control quickly. quickly. Yeah. So we need to have that as a, a baseline. Um, do you have a co-parenting mentor or do you guys, are you just working it out on your own? Like, um, is it someone you look to? We're, we're going to start a co-parenting um, facil- facilitating situation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we need more support for that because mm-hmm. it's more civil usually than most custody battles. You know, you hear battle right there. That's negative. Mm-hmm. So maybe we need some more support groups for co-parenting or and Facebook groups. Like to, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'd like no. to see more um, black people in that space. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, and going back to therapy, like it was huge for me to find someone that looked like me for me to go and talk and have these conversations with. Um, and I think, you know, when we talk about the family dynamic and how, you know, we parent, um, especially, I, I don't want to say especially because we've always, you know, been in racially charged situations and had to be mindful of how we raise our boys and girls. But I think it would be so beneficial to have more, um, you know, co-parenting facilitators out there that looked like us to help us through this this transition. I think you're right. I, having people that look like you can help you to relate. Um, you know, they understand what you're going through. So that's really important. And I hope that we can see more of that. And maybe even the magazine can step up and provide a space for co-parents um, and uh, authors who want to write articles about it or, or even a meetup or a group that we can have online because I think that's important. Even when you're just going through custody, you don't know how to handle it. You sometimes feel like you're just going out of your mind um, because some of the, the decisions that are made for you in those battles um, can be um, devastating and, and you can't, you, it's hard to understand. So um, yeah, so I think that's something that we can even step up to do. Let me ask you, where can our audience follow you on social media? Because you are a sports star too. So we want to we want to keep up with what you're doing and all your achievements and just you know stand you and, and and clap for you and cheer. So where can we find you? I am Natasha Hastings on everything. So okay. Natasha Hastings, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, NatashaHastings.com. Shouldn't be a problem to find me. Just type my name in. <laughs> awesome. That makes it so easy. So that's it. Well, I want to thank you for coming on Back Talk today to talk to us about co-parenting and giving us this insight on how to do it successfully. So thank you, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, here we go. We're going to end the show, guys. And I want to thank you for participating and listening to Back Talk by Successful Black Parenting Magazine, the live stream and podcast talk show for parents if you miss part of the show, no worries. You can just wait a few minutes and click the replay of this podcast, share it with anyone who needs to hear it, and let's get the word out. I broadcast every Saturday at 11 a.m. And next week, I'll be talking with Dr. Rihanna Elise Anderson about the talk, especially about how to reduce racial stress and trauma to raise a well-balanced, healthy child. Be sure to visit our syndicated podcast replays on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Android, and more. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So don't forget to check out our website at SuccessfulBlackParenting.com, which is full of great content to help you to thrive and not just survive as a parent. Until next time, I wish you all the best and much success. Take care. <laughs>